Thank you for the introduction. Um, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to come to my group. It's a pleasure to be here. And this, and this is my first uh, conference uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. So it's, uh, it's really nice to be able to be uh, with people again. And so before going to mathematics, I would like just to point, I mean, uh, Pedro mentioned that on the day before yesterday, there was some activity related to this May 12th. Uh, the May 12th uh, was created uh, in uh, the World Meeting for Women in Mathematics in 2018 in Rio, just before the ICM in Rio, uh, as a proposal by the Iranian Mathematical Society in honor of Madame Mizahani. And uh, it was her birthday. And, and so I just would like to mention a couple of uh, female mathematicians who inspired me in different moments. So, uh, Nicole Tom uh, Jagerman, uh, I never met her in person, but I think it's uh, probably the, um, the senior female mathematician in this field. So it's, uh, uh, and Ophelia Alas is a colleague, I mean, she's retired now at my department, but she, I, I took uh, classes with her when I was a graduate student, I think, and she was the only uh, full professor, uh, female full professor of my department ever. And well, Mirna Jamonia, um, when I went to do my studies in Paris, um, was there and she was uh, very welcoming. And so it was uh, really great to have her around. And some other, so Yolanda Morena, uh, who is a, a friend, say, and um, it's a shame she's not here indeed. Um, Domingo de Madura, and then there is Claribet Pinha, who is my collaborator now. And it's, uh, I mean, most of what I'm saying uh, today is uh, a, joint, a joint work with her from Venezuela. And Alejandra Cáceres is also from Venezuela, uh, but she's now in Brazil. She just finished her PhD with uh, Valentin Ferenzi, and uh, so it's a promising young female mathematician. Okay, so now going to mathematics. Uh, the motivations, uh, so another thing I wanted to say is that uh, I gave some similar talks before, indeed, I think one of my last talks before the pandemic uh, was uh, here in Madrid, and this is actually the, the development I did after uh, visiting Madrid, but on the same topic. And, uh, okay, so, uh, so let's start with the Bonnestone theorem, which says that if uh, it characterizes all the uh, linear onto isometries between two CK spaces. So in this talk, uh, whenever I say isometry, I mean linear bijective isometry. Okay. Um, so it characterizes these isometries. Um, I mean, you, you just uh, get a uh, homeomorphism between, between the two compact spaces and this, uh, uh, sign, this sign function, right? This is a continuous function on, on one of the spaces, but which has uh, absolute value one in all the points. And, and another uh, theorem, which I think it's popular, it's concerning these classical sequence spaces. So uh, for C0 or LP, for P different than two, uh, all the isometries uh, of these spaces are just like uh, signed um, permutations of the canonical basis. Okay, so we will talk about uh, some similar results to this one for this uh, uh, context of combinatorial spaces. So let me, before going further, uh, say what the combinatorial, what I mean by combinatorial space. Um, okay, so. If we take um, a family, which contains, so these are the single terms of N. And a family of finite sets uh, of N. So these are the finite sets. I can define if I take an element in, in, in C0, zero, zero, so just the finite supported functions uh, on N. Uh, I can define a norm associated to this uh, 
family F by taking the supremum over all sums of the coordinates. But here I restrict myself to the elements of this family. Okay, so um, in particular, if we have F being the, just the singletons, then this is just uh, the supremum norm. And if we have F, all the finite uh, subsets of them, then this is the L1 norm. And so this will be a norm on this vector space, and I, then I will just consider the Banach space. So um, from this F, I get the Banach space, and right? this is the completion of C0, 0, 0 of N with this norm. And this is what I mean by the combinatorial space induced by the family F. Okay. In particular, for these two cases, we get that the uh, this is just a zero, and this is just a one, little l one. So I, I I will be looking at this uh, second theorem from this point of view. And the question was um, indeed uh, Kevin Vinland. Uh, Pose this question uh, when we were visiting um, Virginia. And and so uh, he was asking what are the isometries of some other uh, combinatorial space, which is called the Schreier space. Uh, who was introduced by Schreier in the 30s, I think. So the Schreier family is just the family of finite subsets of N such that um, the cardinality of F well, the, the, the original one, I think it was with the equality here. I will make a comment just now. So, but so the, the, the number of elements of F is uh, smaller than its minimum. And so if you look to this definition, the family being, if you close this family under subsets, you get the, just the same norm, right? Because you're taking the supremo, so you will have uh, smaller sums. You, are, you will be adding smaller sums. So we will assume that F uh, is closed under subsets. This is called hereditary. This simplifies some arguments. So this is why here, instead of putting the equality, I can put the, the inequality. So the Schreier family is exactly a family like that, right? Containing the singletons of finite uh, subsets of N and hereditary. So the Schreier space is just this, the combinatorial space induced by this particular family. And so the first, um, Theorem. Oh, I forgot to put the, the names. No, it's here. Okay. So the first theorem says that if you have an isometry uh, of the Schreier space, then this isometry is uh, just assigned and there is no permutations allowed, right? So you have signs here in, in front of the elements of the canonical basis. And, and so all the TNs are taken just to, if you are in, in the, they did it for the real case. So these are just plus and minuses uh, ENs. And the, so this was uh, their result at first. I mean, we did it parallelly, but, and the most general result they proved was that the same holds for Schreier spaces of, of uh, larger finite order. So, the, the Schreier family has some generalizations for countable ordinals and which is some sort of uh, interpolation of the previous one. So here you have the previous um, 
Schreier family here, you have the S1 is exactly the, the, the Schreier family I introduced. So they proved that for all these spaces, uh, for Schreier spaces of finite order, the isometries are just um, signed uh, changes of the basis. Okay. And so they indeed introduced recently, uh, I mean, this is Antunes and Binland, I think it's 2022 indeed, uh, in a paper, in a survey paper about this, these notions for the group of isometries of a banal space. So here is a banal space of sequences, okay? And, and they say that the group of isometries standard if, if the isometries are all the sign permutations of, of the canonical basis, and uh, it is diagonal if the isometries are just the signs of the basis, where the basis is always fixed. So they introduced these two notions, and what we, uh, we can summarize what we said until now, um, that the, um, the C0 and LPs for P different than two uh, have a standard group of isometries, and that the Schreier spaces for finite order have uh, uh, isometry group, uh, which is diagonal, okay? And so, then uh, together with uh, Valentin Perenzi and Adi, who's here, uh, we proved uh, these uh, uh, more general results. So if you take two families, for now I, I won't uh, explain what regular means, I will go to that in a minute. So if you take two families and you have an isometry between the two combinatorial spaces. Now you don't have to uh, supposedly uh, uh, be working with the same family. The families could be different in principle. Then there is a bijection of N and a sequence of signs again. So such that uh, you are um, taking all your basis to this sign permutations. But we are not saying here that all permutations are allowed, right? For, for instance, in the Schreier case, we, if F and G are the Schreier uh, family, then we know that um, uh, the only permutation allowed is the identity. And we know that for the classical sequence spaces, uh, all permutations are allowed. So one um, general question would be, so what are the what are the permutations uh, allowed here? And of course, uh, we need more information on the families to stated. So let me say what regular families are, because this will also um, be used. I mean, there are two more, two, two properties of the families which are helpful in this context. So one is the um, compact, so the compacity. So F is compact. Um, if you see it uh, as the, a subset of two to the n, then if it is compact here, if uh, f is compact, it's disclosed, I would say like this, otherwise it's uh, strange, right? So you just associate its, uh, each element of f to its characteristic function here, and you look at this space. So f is compact if it is closed in, in, as a subspace of uh, the counter set. And and also you can characterize this as um, if you if you have any sequence has a subsequence which is a delta system. So a delta system is just something that you have a fixed root here, and your elements have like uh, other parts. So this would be a sequence converging to this root. Okay, this is a sequence of finite sets in some family F, and it converges to the to the, the parts that they have in common. Um, so compacity is useful because uh, when you have a combinatorial space uh, for a compact family, then the basis is indeed uh, shrinking. So you have a basis in the dual, and this uh, is helpful for, for the arguments. And the other property that the Schreier property has, and which is, so the regular uh, families are just families having these two, two properties. Uh, is the spreadingness. So the family is the spreading. If when you take an element, so we are working here in the natural numbers. So if you take an element and you push it further to the 
to the right. <laughs> and then you get, um, you, you still uh, be in the family. So as it's spreading, if you have, if say M1 and K is in F and you, you take an I larger than an I, then this is, is also an element of F, okay? So all our, our families uh, so far are spreading. Um, all the, so this, it's, it's uh, clear that the Schreier family is um, spreading and also the, the generalized Schreier family that I mentioned before are, are also spreading. So this, these two here, these two things here mean regular. Family. And I will I will explain what's the role of uh, the spreadingness plays in in this in in this uh, result uh, in a moment. So okay. So what are the ingredients of the proof um, um, of this result? So the one main ingredient was this character characterization of the extreme points of the dual ball given by Gowers in his uh, web blog. Um, which says that the extreme points of the uh, dual ball of a combinatorial space is just uh, the combinations, like signed combinations of elements of this uh, basis of the dual, um, which are supported in um, these maximal elements of the family F. So let me also put this uh, in some place. So maybe here, F max. Maximal elements So you have um, sign combinations uh, of elements of the basis which are supported in a maximal set. I mean, they have to take all, I mean, all these values are non zero, right? So the support is, is maximum. This is what I mean. And the other, and then uh, from that, Indeed, we sort of extract by hand what is the form of, if you take an isometry like here, and then you sort of extract by hand what's the form of the, the image of the elements of the dual basis. And um, working with this, we get that the image of uh, one such element is assigned, um, uh, an, a, it's a sign times a, another element of the of the dual basis. Okay, so this is some work by hand, and so we apply that. What we did, ah yes, okay, and, and here, moreover, uh, in the case of Schreier spaces uh, of any order, so not only the finite uh, order that uh, Antonis Binland and Shu got before us. Um, the only bijection allowed is the identity for all the, all the Shire spaces. So the, you cannot permute the basis of the Shire spaces and get an isometry. Um, I'm not sure now if I, my plan was to say here. Okay, maybe when I mention later. So, so um, Christina, can I ask for something yes. about the maximal element? Yes. I understand what that means in the, say, the Schreier family. It's a set you can't enlarge. But what if you do the example of little one? So little one, one little one is not uh, compact, so uh, you won't. I mean, this I Okay, okay. I, you need, so you need the regular uh, part yeah. somehow. Yeah. Sure. Thank so you. So we need the regular, and then we have uh, all the, the all elements of F are contained in some maximal one. Okay, so we started that uh, later. So we 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 got um we got rid of the of the spreading um, hypothesis, and indeed um, our motivation was that because if you don't have spreading, um, then you don't need to restrict yourself to, to the countable setting. Okay, so you can take here. Instead of um, of n, you can take any index set, say gamma, which can be uncountable now, and then you take um, elements in C zero zero gamma, and then you just define the same norm 
here and and you get your your combinatorial space in an uncomfortable setting um, and I will mention a couple of examples of uh, these uh, of combinatorial non separable combinatorial spaces but uh, so this and, and the spreading property so you were saying that when you push to the right you keep in the family you could in principle if you think that your gamma is a cardinal so it's ordered you can put, try to generalize spreading and, and say the same thing but then you won't get compactness i mean if you would just generalize the the spreading to the uncountable setting you, you won't be able to get these two uh, properties at the same time okay so the, what so the solution was just to get rid of the spreading property and so we proved that for compact hereditary family and then we have this um, um topological condition that says that the singletons are all in the closure of the maximal families um, then any isometry between two combinatorial spaces, I mean, here the, the, the gamma is fixed, okay? It's for some gamma fixed. So every isometry is just a signed permutation of the basis again. And this, this condition that the singletons are in the, um, in the closure of the maximal elements, Is related to the fact because what happens so uh, this is what we extracted exactly i mean this is what we replaced the spreading with right because um if you take a family on n which is spreading so you take here some n so you are looking at this singleton so you know that this n is containing some maximal element of the family and then you can push it to the right and doing uh, this i mean um, successively uh, several times you can get indeed a delta system which will be exactly this point and and several disjoint parts here so that um, which are maximal. So if you take n with these parts, which each of these, so this is a maximal element of the family, this is a maximal element and of the family, and so on. So you get a sequence of maximal elements, which is indeed converging to the singleton, right? So, uh, but but you didn't really need this order or anything like that. It was just related to this topological property of the there and so and uh, spreading also plays another role uh, in, the, in the in the in, in the fact that for the Schreier families for instance the only um, the only permutation allowed is the identity I will mention this uh, shortly so ingredients of the proof here so we use the same characterization of the extreme points of the dual ball and then and then here there is a, some subtle thing. I will put a question in the next slide because um, so in the first paper we were starting from an isometry between the duals of the uh, combinatorial spaces, and 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 then we were just getting that it 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 it, it is a permut a sign permutation of the basis in the dual and in, in particular if you if you start with an isometry in the space between the spaces itself you get um, that it is also a permutation, sign permutation of the basis. But here uh, we, we try to do the, the same, but indeed we needed that the, 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 this, this joint operator, so the, the dual isometry say, uh, has to be weak star continuals exactly because uh, once we have that this, the singletons are in the closure of the, um, of the maximal elements, what we get is finally that, sorry, is that these elements are in the weak star closure of the extreme points. So you are uh, approximating, you are approximating this, uh, the, the, what's, the, what's the image of the isometry here by these ones, and these ones, you know that they have to be fixed because this is an isometry, okay? I mean, they have to be sent uh, extreme to extreme. So we needed this uh, weak star continuity. Oh, and then let me maybe mention this first because I, so this is what I was saying, right? That uh, with uh, Adi and Valentin, 
we, we started directly with a, an isometry between the dual spaces, and here we needed this weak star continuity. And then, so my question, and maybe someone knows the answer because uh, uh, I'm not sure for combinatorial spaces, it, I think it should be, uh, I think it's, the answer should be yes, right? That every isometry is weak star continuous, or, and this is equivalent that it is the adjoint operator of some isometry between the spaces. Okay, and just to mention, so uh, Gilles Godefra has some results. I mean, I think he has some other properties. He didn't have the time to look at it, but at least for spaces whose dual do not contain L1, this is true. But this is not our case because our combinatorial spaces, they are C0 saturated. Okay. And okay, so let me just go back. Here are two, just to mention two examples, because so why were we interested in generalizing the result um, to, the, to the uncountable setting, right? To the non separable uh, combinatorial spaces. And it was uh, motivated because there are some interesting examples of um, families in the uncountable setting and the, the, the corresponding banana. So one of them was by Jordi Lopez about and Stefan Todorcevic, and they characterized uh, a cardinal being uh, omega erdős or not being omega erdős. I want to uh, explain more than what is written now, but um, exactly by the existence um, of a family which is hereditary compact and has some other. Uh, non this is um, a sort of non-trivial. Uh, a characteristic of the family. Um, so if there is a hereditary compact and large family on Kappa, okay? And so this family in particular uh, induced some, um, some banal space with, uh, with an unconditional basis, um, which also has interesting properties. I think it's no um, subsequence of the basis is subsymmetry. And, um, and another example um, from, from a joint work with them, uh, we also, I mean, we construct these families in, in, in very large cardinals in a, in a more, because this, this theorem is interesting, but it's very non-constructive. You don't see how, I mean, what is exactly the, 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 the families induced by this um, coloring here, which is uh, just, you get from, out of, of uh, your hypothesis. And here we built it sort of by hand, several examples of these families. I'm just putting here one of them. So where we pass from a family that lives in the, in the subsets of, um, so the gamma here is uh, kappa. And, and then from this family, we make an induction and build a family which now lives on the, on the complete binary tree of height kappa. So you pass from the cardinal kappa to the two to the kappa, right? Your gamma, you pass from a family in gamma to a family in two to the gamma. And um, so we get a very large families. And with, with these sort of families, we, we built, um, <laughs> Well, uh, more than one uh, in, in more than one direction, uh, generalize. I mean, sort of serious uh, type spaces which are non-separable. Okay, so reflexive spaces with some properties uh, similar to serious space, in particular, no copies of C zero or LPs. And I mean, the the the, the ones which don't have a copy of C zero, it's not the, just a combinatorial space of a family because this will be. C0 saturated, as I mentioned, but it will be, I mean, as, as in the serious case, some sort of interpolation that you do with the families and you get um, this space. Um, so this is just to mention that there are interesting uh, families in this uh, non-separable context. Um, okay, and so more results um, that, that we extracted um, from from the arguments, so uh, so this is uh, this proposition is a generalization of of the Schreier case. Uh, so in, it's a case when the only bijection allowed, which induces an isometry, is the identity. So um, we extracted from the from the Schreier case on. Um, In the same way 
um, as here. So what so what happens in the in the let me say what happens in the Schreier family. So the Schreier family has uh, so the the singleton uh, one is just um, isolated. Okay, so if you look here. Um, it, the singleton one is a maximal element, so it will be isolated in, in this when you look at this topology. And then if you take singleton two, then the singleton two will be the, the limit uh, of exactly taking two and another pair, because you are allowed to take pairs starting with two, right, by that condition, defining the Shire family. So uh, two is not isolated, but it is a limit of isolated here. Uh, and then if you take three, now you have, um, uh, uh, you, know, you, you can see three as the limit of triples, okay? But then uh, the, the pairs which you are using to combine with three, these are, uh, these are not isolated. So, I mean, you, you are sort of, um, what I'm trying to say, because I don't want to introduce the cantor bendix song, right? But um, it, it measures, um, how far a point is from being isolated, right? And in the Schreier family, we know that a singleton one is isolated, then singleton two is like one step from being isolated, singleton three is two steps from being isolated and so on. So they have this different topological property. And this is what um, makes that the only isometry is induced, I mean, the only permutation allowed is the identity map because you cannot send uh, some point with a different topological property, uh, one point to another which has a different topological property. And this is what we extracted here in the general case. So if you have, in, in even in the uncountable setting, if you have that the counter counter ranks of the singletons are different, right? I mean, each, uh, for, for all of them, they are different. Um, and then the, I mean, in, in, indeed, the bijection has to take points which have from which to a point, one point to another point which has the same under Bendix of index. Right? This is what I, this is what we did. So, this is, was a generalization of the case when the only um, permutation is the, the identity. Um, and this is a more combinatorial result because it's not so much related to the to the combinatorial spaces, but um, uh, the combinatorial result is that if P is a bijection inducing an isometry between the combinatorial spaces, uh, here we go back to the countable setting, um, and 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 we have that the families are spreading. Then indeed the families are the same. I mean it's. It, it, you might have more permutation than just the identity, okay? Even in this case, because for instance, you can make a, 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 some three with the, with the Schreier family. And instead of, of saying that you have, so you, because your maximal elements determine the family, right? So here you are saying that a single on one, pair starting with two, triple starting with three, et cetera. These are the maximal elements. And you can do a trick and sort of, uh, um, stretch this and say, for instance, that all the all the singletons in this interval are maximal, and then all pairs uh, starting in this interval are maximal, and then all triples. I mean, instead of having only one element in each interval, you can have more, and so then uh, uh, isometric um, permutations which keep elements within these elements, uh, these intervals, they will still induce an isometry. Um, but the family is the same. I mean, the, the point is that you cannot have two different um, combinatorial, uh, two, two, two isometric combinatorial spaces uh, coming from spreading families uh, for different families. So this is uh, uh, the result. And so just some comments that are compact families which cannot be permuted onto a regular one. This, I'm mentioning this because we hoped uh, to, care, to sort of have that regular families would be like uh, the representatives of all combinatorial spaces in the, in the countable setting, but they are not. And 
and there are homeomorphic compact families which cannot be permuted one to the other. So, I mean, this um, because I see these permutations also as, um, as a, a homeomorphism between the two families, right? It, it, it induces naturally, if you have a permutation of gamma, it induces naturally a homeomorphism between uh, the families. And uh, but so it's a it's a specific sort of homeomorphism between the families. Okay, so there are homeomorphic, homeomorphic families which are not which cannot be permuted one to the other. Um, so what about uh, Sirison space? So this is um, what happens in this context. So these are not combinatorial spaces in the in the um, in the in the. Um, as I define them, but they are also induced by families. I mean, you can use these families to define them, in particular the classic of Sirison space. So, well, and, and they are also sequence spaces. So, what about them? So, uh, if you have an isometry uh, of a Sirison space, and then there is a bijection of the, of the initial part and the sequence of signs, so the, the isometries are signed. Um, permutations of the of the of the canonical basis but they permute only this initial part in particular for the citizen space this just the first two okay so here you have a different restriction on what permutations are allowed so it is fixed for for the larger elements of the basis and so one question that uh, I have is, so I, as I mentioned, there is these constructions of Sirison space in the uncountable setting. So can this, this be generalized to these, um, to these uh, spaces? Um, I don't know. And OK. And then, so there is this Masur Ulam property, which is really, so there, this was a question posed. I don't remember if it was you or if it was Kevin being uh, in, in, in a conference. So uh, a Banner space has the Masur Ulam property if, if for any other Banner space as an, and an isometry. Now I don't mean linear isometry because these are just the, the unit spheres of the two spaces. So just an isometry between these two spaces on two. If this isometry, it can be always be extended to a linear onto isometry between the two Banach spaces. And so C0 NLPs do have this property and the zero sum space also has this property. So uh, one question is, um, do combinatorial spaces have this property? I don't know. And, um, or at least, is it possible because here we were working just with, with isometries between combinatorial spaces? So, is it possible at least to extend every if you take here two combinatorial spaces and an isometry between their unit spheres? Uh, is it then possible to extend to a linear isometry? So, I don't know. These are some, some questions. And some further questions. So, the, do similar results hold for LP norms? Because here you can just take, um, put a P here and put a P here and then put R here. Here, and then you have some different spaces, but then you don't have this, uh, you, you have to, to follow some different path because you don't have these extreme points of the dual ball characterization, right? But I think that uh, sort of the same, um, using the same sort of points of the dual ball, it, it, it should be possible. I mean, I'm working with this with the postdoc now, uh, and uh, I think it, it is possible, but we still don't know. Okay, and 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 the last uh, question, it's just. Um, question that was occurring to me during the conference because people were talking about banal lattices, people were talking about other structures. And, and I was wondering, because I, I mean, we have several, uh, I presented to you several um, results, but um, I mean, it seems like for each, you have to do a different argument, right? I mean, so I'm wondering whether there exists a more general argument and there is some 
some structure that we don't see, we are not seeing right now, but that guarantees that the isometries are permutation signed, are signed permutations of, of this canonical basis. So are all these results instances of a more general result, say using some other structure that we didn't use so far in, in the results? Um, okay, so I think this is, uh, what I wanted to say, here are the reference. I will come uh, back to this. But before I finish, I would just like to invite you to come to Brazil in December. It's summer in Brazil. <laughs> so this is <laughs> the, the third edition of a conference that we are organizing. Indeed, we called it Butante edition because Butante is, is the, camp, the name of the camp, I mean, the, the neighborhood of the campus. And it's going to be on the campus of the University of Sao Paulo. Some people yesterday night were complaining that it should be called the non-beach edi edition <laughs> because the previous two edition we organized it at the beach but I mean this time because of the pandemic and all the difficulties we, we made it simpler and organizing at the we are organizing at the campus but still I think it will be very nice I mean we'll be happy also to to help you with uh, if you have wants to stay longer in Brazil here you have the main speakers it might be particularly interesting for students and young people because we plan to have several uh, sort of tutorials and so let's uh, go to Brazil. And uh, to finish, I think this is the last talk. So I think we should thank the organizers of this uh, very nice conference. So let's uh, thank them. And then...